is the SWBC Mortgage Dallas Cowboys Legends Show. Tony Dorsett has scored his first touchdown as a pro. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Tony Hill, touchdown, Tony Hill. Brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mahindra Tractors. Get the best seven-year warranty in Texas. And by SWBC Mortgage. Prepare to win. Call SWBC for all your insurance needs. Now your hosts, Mickey Spagnola and Bill Jones. It's a Wednesday night at 7 o'clock at the Cowboys Club at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. And it's time for the Cowboys Legend Show. Bill Jones along with Mickey Spagnola and... The Cowboys have a three-game win streak. How about that? Maybe? And I think that's probably caused a lot of these people to show up for the show here at the Cowboys right. Club, right? The biggest crowd of the season so Absolutely. far. Absolutely. Or maybe it has something to do with our guests. Yes, we have a quite a Legends guest uh, tonight, which we, who we will introduce in uh, just a moment. But the Cowboys, after winning over the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday, 28-17, make their first ever trip to Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta to take on the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday looking for their fourth straight win. Things to seem to be back on track. Well, they certainly played, uh, I think, a signature game on Sunday against Kansas City. Uh, that was a heck of a win against a team that I think everybody considered was awfully good, especially their offense, and they shut them down except for one play, right? <laughs> yeah, one play to end the first half. That's exactly right. All right, it's time to introduce our Legends guest for this week. He's a college football Hall of Famer from the University of Alabama. He should be a pro football Hall of Famer. He's in the Cowboys ring of honor. One of the greatest middle linebackers to ever play the game of football. Mr. Leroy Jordan is in the house tonight. Yeah, it's good to see you. How you doing, Leroy? I'm glad to be here. Man, I'm... It, we got that on right? Yeah. You got it. You oh, got oh, it good. Okay. okay. How's that for an introduction, huh? Uh, that is great. <laughs> I appreciate that so much, Bill. Well, and it's great to have you here. Well, I'm glad to be here. Just excited about uh, the coming year and the finish of the Cowboys season. So uh, we, we got a lot to look forward to these next few weeks. So what were your thoughts on this team? You know, they got off to a little bit of a slow start, but seem to be picking it up, and I know you're paying attention. Yes, I am. I uh, I kind of swapped uh, chats with uh, Sean Lee this last week and congratulated him on the great win. Uh, that was a big win over Kansas City. Now that that was a good team, and uh, they are, have a great offensive uh, coach and a great offensive football team. And for our guys to step up, uh, you know, I was a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> at halftime. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little worried at halftime. But they sure picked it up in the second half and came out and shut them out. You know what the turning point in the game was? What is that? It was the potato sack race at oh, the it, beginning of the third quarter. When the Chiefs won the potato sack race after they scored the touchdown to take the lead in the third quarter, yeah. the Cowboys outscored them 14 to nothing after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm glad to know that. I, and I don't know if they showed it on TV, but they they yes, did they this, showed it on TV. They did the potato sack race after, after they their scored touchdown, the touchdown celebration. celebration. <laughs> I think they forgot to take the sacks off after that. Yeah, <laughs> they did. Well, but that defense really starting to pick up. I think the the real potential here is uh, we got some pass rushers now that are starting to show themselves. Uh, uh, they haven't been together too much this uh, year to, so they could play together and get accustomed to each other and and show what they could do as a unit. And uh, our linebackers, I think uh, Sean uh, is coming uh, better and better each week and staying, you know, if he stays healthy, he'll be a, a real part of that defense. And uh, he's the leader on the defense, and he, he just – does a great job. And they were facing the NFL's leading rusher in that game. Yes. Kareem Hunt, the uh, rookie out of Toledo, third-round draft pick. It's just so fun to watch Sean Lee. When I watch Sean Lee, I think I'm, I have a flashback to the 60s and 70s, and I think I'm watching Leroy Jordan. Oh, well, it's no surprise at all that you are text buddies with Sean Lee. Let me tell you well, that. Well, <laughs> we we, uh, we communicate, and then uh, I, uh, I talk to him quite often. Uh, we uh, 
bonded uh, after his couple of first years uh, having injuries and so forth, and I called him and told him about I had had similar problems, and then I went on to play 12 years without missing a game, and so I told him it's possible, so you got to work at it and keep keep going and keep pushing, and that's the kind of guy he is. He's going to keep working on it, and he's just uh, really, uh, I think, going to get better as he goes along. So uh, for the folks that may not know, Leroy was a first-round draft choice of the Cowboys in 1963, played 14 seasons, right? 14, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, he not only was a first-round draft pick, he was the sixth pick in the entire yes, draft. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how did you first get together with, with Sean Lee? Uh, and, and I know I remember seeing you guys talk at one of those – uh, practices yeah. afterwards. They mm-hmm. had the dinner at AT&T Stadium, a little reunion of the older players. And I saw you two talking, and I'm looking, and I'm going, okay, this is good. <laughs> well, I, I called him and uh, asked to talk to him. I, well, I called somebody at the cowboy office and got a number for him. So uh, I, I reached out to him about the injury process and everything and what my career turned around to be and. Uh, the 12 years later, we were in the playoffs, 11 out of 12 years there in one run. So, uh, yeah, I, I told him, I said, the injury is uh, early on. Uh, you just have to get used to that and have to work through it. And he uh, he acknowledged that and said he was working out early every morning and late every day. <laughs> and, and he's got that work ethic, and he is a great, great player and uh, and I love to watch him play. You know, and it's uh, pretty amazing how, uh, and I, I, I call him a modern-day Leroy Jordan, and it's, it's amazing mm-hmm. how his career, not only in the NFL but also in college, mirrors your career because you played for the legendary Bear Bryant. Of yes. course, he played for the legendary Joe Paterno yes. at uh, Penn State, both drafted by uh, the Cowboys and immediately became team leaders on the team. Um, I mean, that's got to be neat uh, to have a relationship now it is. with a guy that, that shares this very similar modern-day background <laughs> yeah, to yours. It really is. And, uh, you know, those coaches had uh, influence on us in college, and so we uh, we took on the leadership roles that they wanted us to be in and develop that. And uh, when we got the Cowboys, uh, I think both of us kind of, put in a position that we needed to take a leadership role. And so we both stepped up and did our job and took the leadership role on and worked at it. By the way, here's a quote from Bear Bryant about Leroy Jordan. Leroy Jordan is one of the finest football players the world has ever seen. The world. <laughs> the world has ever seen. If runners stayed between the sidelines, he tackled them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he... He was a great uh, mentor for me, and, uh, you know, I, I, I tell everybody that my parents set the, the standard for me uh, early on in my life, and Coach uh, Bryant sure improved it while I was there with him, and, and then I came to play for Coach Tom Lander, and he taught me, a, you know, even more about the rules of life. Well, he may have said that, and I was looking at some of his games and everything, so the 63, 1963 Orange Bowl. Yep. They beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma 17. Beat Oklahoma, Bill. <laughs> I'm, I'm, an OU, I'm an OU. I was kind of rub right. that in a little bit. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, it, and little it said bit. you made 31 tackles. Is that possible? I guess uh, it is. Yeah, I went back and uh, had them to recount the tackles to make sure I, I didn't want to be lying. You didn't want to get cheated, to, right? I, I didn't want to be lying to anybody. <laughs> so, so I asked them if they would go back, and they went back and checked the records, and they uh, said, okay, we watched the film, and we you got we were accurate on the tackles. So, so how many plays? Tackles. How many plays did they run? Probably sixty-three or sixty-four. So, but, so you uh, made half the tackles. But. Uh, but back then, they were probably uh, 50 running plays <laughs> and uh, 10 or 12 uh, passing plays. And uh, Leroy was MVP of that Orange Bowl. He was also MVP of the Blue Bonnet Bowl at the conclusion of the 1960 season, which was a 3-3 tie <laughs> against Texas. Yeah. Yeah, it was. How would you guys let him kick a field goal? What's the deal? Well, uh, <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> we, we had five shutouts uh, that season, so we just couldn't shut out one more team. Man. <laughs> well, you know. well, in 1961, the national championship year, yeah. you had six shutouts. Yeah. And who did you beat in the Sugar Bowl? The Arkansas yeah. Razorbacks. Yeah. Arkansas Razorbacks and Jerry Jones and his uh, <laughs> teammates, Jimmy Johnson, and uh, they had a lot more. Switzer uh, was involved in some yeah. way, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coach Switzer was there, and certainly at that time, and so. Uh, uh, we had a we had a great time uh, talking about that when I got here and Jerry Jones bought the Cowboys and everything. So we enjoyed reminiscing about that. So how did you? Um, and we'll get into a bunch of this stuff. But I'm assuming you grew up XL Alabama. Is that X- how you say it? L XL Alabama. And it's about I 250 people. 250. <laughs> yeah. How many in your you have family was half of it or what? Well the. Probably half of them were my cousins or <laughs> family members. <laughs> so, so I assume you were destined to go to Alabama. Well, I uh, I was wavering back and forth about Auburn and Alabama because Auburn had won the national championship in '57, I guess, and I was graduating in '59, and so uh, they sure had a great team. But Coach Bryant came to Alabama in '58, and so. I was convinced if he was offered me a scholarship, I was going to take it. So, and he did. One day in his office, an alumni took me up there to meet Coach Bryant, and we were sitting there. And it seems like he's got a desk on top of a mountain in in <laughs> you know, in the room, and you're sitting down on the valley down here. And uh, he, he said, "Leroy, I'm going to offer you a scholarship. Will you come?" I said, yes, sir. And that may be the only two words I said in the whole meeting that took place. So, but I, I I let him know it. I wanted to go to Alabama. So he had just him. gotten there. So you yeah, knew he, who he was, though, right? Yeah, I knew who he was. And, you know, they scouted me my junior year. And then I got recognized because we were playing against a bigger team. And uh, they were scouting a guy on the other team. And. I had a better game than he did, so they came over to our dressing room after the game and uh, met us, and met the coach, and met me, and told us they would be back next year to follow me my senior year in college and in high school, and so they were, they were right there. Imagine that he had a better yeah. game than the guy they were looking. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was it that uh, when you look back, what, how did Coach Bryant influence you the most? His work ethic and uh, his uh, attention to detail and uh, wanting you to be the best prepared you could possibly be physically and mentally uh, at the time of the game, not before the game or not after the game, at the right time of the kickoff of the game. And uh, that was a great uh, uh, emphasis that he had on the game, and he was great at it and if coach landry would have been uh, a little bit better at that getting us ready uh, at the peak time of the game we might have won <laughs> four or five championships but <laughs> coach always had he was always uh, thinking uh, he could change things and uh, do it himself with mental things instead of uh, us letting the players do it and he would even be changing things on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Always tweaking. Huh? Yeah, tweaking. Uh, something a little yeah. bit here and there. Yeah. And he was an unbelievable coach and great mentor for me, too, Coach uh, Bryant and Coach Landry. I was so lucky to have those two guys in my life. Well, we have got we uh, look forward to the next hour with Leroy Jordan. We're going to take a trip down memory lane. When we come back, Leroy is also an author now. And he's got a new book out. Yeah. It's Leroy, My Story of Faith, Family, and Football. We're going to talk about that and much more with the great Leroy Jordan on the Cowboys Legend Show in just a moment.
to the SWBC Mortgage Dallas Cowboys Legends Show. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. And the Cowboys Legends Show is brought to you by SWBC Mortgage. For more than 40 years, SWBC has been helping people, companies, and financial institutions prepare to win in Texas and across the country. Visit SWBC.com to learn more. Bill Jones along with Mickey Spagnola and our Legends guest this week, the Cowboys Ring of Honor member and College Football Hall of Famer, Leroy Jordan. We've got a wireless microphone here. We've got Smacker Miles. Uh, once again here this week. Now, Leroy, Smacker over here is the daughter of Les Miles, the former LSU coach. And uh, Leroy was just saying he was at the Alabama-LSU game this week. Uh, I'm sorry. And, no, you're fine. I'm actually very intrigued by it. I would love to hear you compare Nick Saban and, and Bear Bryant. Because I've actually never – I'm a little bit starstruck right now because I've never gotten to meet someone who played for a Bear Bryant. Well, uh they are both very similar in their teaching the same things, uh, uh, you know, honesty, integrity, and hard work, and what team building a team is all about. And uh, Coach Brown used to always say, I'm teaching you the game of life, not the game of football. And if you use these uh, examples and uh, standards uh, in your life, you will be successful no matter what business you're in. So. Uh, he got that across to me and all my teammates when we were there, and and I, I really tried to accentuate that and uh, use it the rest of my life. And by the way, Leroy Smacker is quite an athlete in her own right. She swam mm-hmm. on the University of Texas swim team, Ooh. and uh, she's got a couple of brothers who play college football right now, one at the University of North Carolina and the other one at the University of Nebraska. That's great yeah. for my athletic family. That, yeah. <laughs> And so anyone in attendance here at the Cowboys Club, if you've got a question for Leroy, find Smacker, and we'll get the wireless microphone over to you, and you can ask a question of the great Leroy Jordan. All right, let's talk about your book a little bit, because okay. you've got the book that just yeah. hit the the, yeah. uh, the bookstores, uh, Leroy, My Story of Faith, Family, and Football. Yeah, it's uh, something uh, I wanted to do uh, for my grandkids to be able to look back and see where Grandpa came from and where he, what uh, ventures he made uh, in life. And uh, uh, my my days at, on the farm where I grew up and everything. And then my high school days in a little town of Excel, Alabama. That's a real small town. We had one blinking four-way red light in the <laughs> center of town. So I could tell you how, how large the town was. So. But uh, I just wanted to do something to leave uh, uh, information what uh, so my grandkids and kids would look at it later on in life and say, oh, okay, Papa did have a good good tenure. <laughs> he, he had a good time. How long did it take you to kind of go through it and try to remember all the stories? Well, it took a couple of years, but I had some really good help. Uh, Steve Townsend was a writer with me uh, in the book, and he had worked at the University of Alabama for 25 years or plus in the athletic department, and he had been so involved with the Bryant Museum, and they had all the tapes and interviews by Coach Bryant and everything back when even we played. Uh, so he could go back and refresh my memory on a lot of the games and plays that were highlights that uh, we got to mention in the in the book. So, so there's a... And then we're getting off the subject here. But there's a museum for just Coach Bryant yes. at Alabama? That's uh, the biggest thing in Alabama is the mm-hmm. Coach Bryant Museum. <laughs> in Tuscaloosa? In Tuscaloosa, yeah. It's wow. Right there by the stadium. And you wrote the book uh, sort of for your family more than anything? or Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wrote it for, for my family and uh, wanted them to know kind of the s- circle that I had made in my lifetime. And... Uh, so hopefully we'll we'll get to point that out to them a little bit before while I'm still here. So uh, <laughs> we got some uh, eight and ten year old grandsons. So we hopefully we'll be able to point out what we've done in the last uh, seventy years or so. Kind of so, let them know that 
I really did play football, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did play football. Yeah, faith, family, and football. So, what message do you hope that they get out of reading the book? Well, I hope they'll uh, integrity, honesty, and hard work. I hope they'll uh, get that uh, point across because uh, it, it took me on a good circle, and I, you know, I met some idols of mine in the. I mentioned them in the book, John Wayne and Elvis Presley. I got to meet them several times, and John Wayne came out to practice uh, at uh, Thousand Oaks, California, and so I got to be pretty good friends with him, and he came here and had the uh, uh, first showing of the movie Chisholm here in Dallas, and he invited uh, four or five of us guys out to see the movie in the grand opening, and uh, he gave us a Winchester rifle that he had used in the, a replica of that in, in the movie, and God, I have that posted on my <laughs> wall, and it, it's one of those keepsakes that I, I can't forget. And as a matter of fact, I've seen that rifle because one too. of the guys that was with you was Walt Garrison, yes. and Walt got it in his house uh, up very prominently with yeah. a light shining on it. <laughs> but that – so – Walt had told me the story, and I don't know if you were part of the group, that when you guys were in Thousand Oaks, they, you know, when they were filming stuff, people, they, they came riding in on horses, yeah, or yeah. people that were close came riding in on horses to watch yeah. practice? Yeah, they uh, they came down and got off their horses and hung around and practiced for a little while, and we got to talk to them. Coach, uh, Coach Landry uh, gave us a few minutes uh, off when the... The celebrities came riding up on horses. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So John Wayne came riding up yeah, on a horse? Yes, yes really. Yes. yes. <laughs> they, they came down to the outside of the practice field, and so we got to go over and visit with them, and then they'd go back up and shoot their movies up in the, up in the hills behind us there. <laughs> so I did the same thing. When Walt told me the story, I said, say what? Yeah, say what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's amazing. That was, yeah. It was fun deal because, you know, and we got to know them over several years, and we did that every year. They would come by and uh, went and visit us. And even if it wasn't when they were filming a movie, they'd just come to practice and visit, you know. And I thought it was special going out there and seeing John Wooden's basketball camp with Yeah, Maggie right. Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go to um, – so if you go to the restaurant in Albuquerque, uh, it, it's their famous restaurant. But anyways, there's a picture of of John Wayne on one wall, and then right here next to it is Don Perkins. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess he was he would have been there yeah, during your was, period, he, right? Yeah, he was there during that period of time. Uh, so he he got to know him, and uh, both of them, uh, I guess, hanging out from that part of the country, uh, New Mexico and everything. Yeah. So, uh, they, they got to cross paths several times. My things were simpler back then. <laughs> <laughs> Lots Can simpler. you imagine the horses riding up to practice today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. All right. And, and the other wait, thing, wait. Elvis. You mentioned yeah, El- yeah. How do you get to know Elvis? Elvis, I, uh, I went to uh, see him uh, in Las Vegas after the Pro Bowl, and uh, we came back by there, and he was uh, doing his uh, deal, and we went one night, and it was so good, we went another night, and it was Dan Reeves and his wife, Pam, and my wife, Biddy, and myself, and after the show was over, he did three hours without taking a break. No way. Seriously. Three hours plus without taking a break. And I, I said, I'm going to go back and talk to him and see if I can meet him. I went back, and the security guard was there, and he said, you're who? I said, I'm Leroy Jordan, Dallas Cowboys, and I, I, I wanted to see Elvis, if I could shake his hand and say hello to him because I'm, I'm a, a big fan and everything. So he said, come on back. And I met Elvis, and he loved Coach Bryant. He really uh, he loved Coach Bryan, and he he had idolized Coach Bryan for uh, a number of years, and so we had a bonding right there. And we must have talked forty five minutes, and I was going to go back and get my wife and Dan and Pam and bring them in to meet Elvis, but I'd used up so much time <laughs> I didn't do that, and I haven't heard the last of it for fifty three years. <laughs> My wife had to let me forget for 53 years. <laughs> All right, let's let this be a lesson to everybody that's listening to us. You don't get this anywhere else, okay? 
All right, we continue with Leroy Jordan on the Cowboys Legend Show in just a moment. whole lot more. Back, back, back. It's a touchdown! It's a touchdown! Oh, Big Ben struck midnight! To the SWBC Mortgage Dallas Cowboys Legends Show. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Hey, welcome back to our second half hour with the great Leroy Jordan here on the Dallas Cowboys Legend Show, which is brought to you by SWBC Mortgage for more than 40 years. SWBC helping people, companies, and financial institutions prepare to win in Texas and across the country. Visit SWBC.com to learn more. Bill Jones, Mickey Spagnola, Smacker Miles with the wireless microphone. Somebody here at the Cowboys Club at the Star has a question for Leroy. Yes, here's Driscoll. Uh, Leroy, uh, there was a guy that came along at the start of your career, the end of his career, named uh, Jerry Tubbs. And I was curious how your relationship with him was because he later became a, ca- a coach there at, when he retired. And by the way, my last, my last name is Tubbs, but I have no relation. <laughs> and I, I will quickly point out that Jerry Tubbs, of course, an Oklahoma Sooner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a great Oklahoma Sooner. And Jerry was, uh, I was kind of brought in, I guess, to take Jerry's place or replace him when he retired. And so after a couple of years of me playing the outside and backing him up, uh, uh Jerry thought it was time for him to retire, and he did retire and become the linebacker coach and defensive coach uh, at that time. And he coached me for the next uh, 12 years, I guess. Uh, uh, He was a great mentor and a great leader for me to follow, and he was one of the smartest uh, coaches I've ever known as far as uh, looking at the football formations and see what tip-offs would they might give you if you looked at them close enough. 
you know, a guard setting back a couple of inches on certain plays, a tackle moving up uh, certain plays, and, you know, just picking up things on film. And so uh, he was a great mentor for me, and uh, I, I'm so proud that Sean Lee is, uh, is just that type of guy. He is a studious guy and loves to watch the films, and he gets his job done uh, in a great way, that one. You know, the the play you made in the Kansas City game when they they <clears> kind of <throat> hit the motion went all to the Kansas City right and they were going to throw that screen back to the to the to their left. Sean Lee was there before the receiver was there. <laughs> yeah. It was absolutely amazing. Because if he's not there, that play's going. Yeah. And uh and he knew that from the lineup and you know, he'd watched enough film and, and it registered on him quick enough that he could make the decision to to be there, you know, and make the play. You know, that was a great question because, you know, we talk about the legacy of the Cowboys quarterbacks, but there was a real legacy of middle linebackers, uh, starting with Jerry Tubbs, then yourself, and you handed off to Bob Bruning eventually. Yeah. Uh, it was an amazing, uh, what, yeah. 20, uh, 25 yeah, years. Yeah, 20, 25 years run of it uh, with uh, Bob Brunig and uh, Jerry and myself and uh, – you know, it was it was great because we had a continuity of the uh, philosophy of the guys on the defense that uh, we worked together extremely well, and the coaches uh, taught us what to look for, and we gathered it in. You know, and we executed. So, I I realize this. We we're working on a uh, Cowboys Legend show uh, on Gene Stallings. Yeah, and it just went right by me that you would have played for Gene at Alabama. Yes, And then I did. as an assistant coach here with the Cowboys. Yes, I did. It was a great uh, tenure for me to be able to, you know, play for a guy like Gene Stallings uh, in college and then come on to – he was a defensive back coach. Uh, he just finished and graduated from A&M and he came to uh, Alabama as Coach Bryant's assistant in uh, – so he was, he was a great mentor for me. And he would stay after practice every game, every day, and throw balls for me. And because I wanted to work on uh, interceptions and I wanted to get better at catching the ball. And, uh, uh, you know, I ended up catching, uh, I guess I intercepted 32 or something passes. <laughs> it was, in, in uh, my career. you shortchanged yourself here. It was 36. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I laugh because, all right, this is amazing. Okay, 1974, was it, against the Cincinnati Bengals. Ken yeah. Anderson, the Cincinnati Bengals. First five minutes of the game, Leroy Jordan intercepted not one, not two, but three passes and returned one of them for a touchdown. That's amazing. <laughs> three interceptions in the span of about five minutes of the first quarter of one game. Yeah, that was a fun <laughs> deal, and I've been asked about that millions of times since uh, – I retired, so. Did you have the wrong colored jersey on or what? <laughs> well, one of them was the tip ball, but okay. so I got to get a gig credit. For one of them, uh, my teammates, I think, tipped the ball on one of them, and I was uh, in the area, so I picked it up and uh, uh, went in for the touchdown on that one, I think. So. All right, I've got another question from uh, your days when you first were entering the National Football League. And, and back in the day, they used to have the old college all-star game, yeah. college all-star team, and what they would do. It's amazing even to think that they could even do this. But going back 40, 50 years ago, they, they'd have a college all-star team from the previous year, and they would play the – champions from the NFL yeah. to start off the preseason. It was in yeah. August of the following year. So your rookie season, August of what would that have been, 1963, Yeah. okay, you're playing for the college all-star team, and the college all-star team beats the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> That's yeah, amazing did. to even think yeah. of today. Yeah, we did. Uh, and, you know, not too long after that, they canceled that uh, <laughs> game where the college guys played the NFL champions. So, uh, and I, I think it was the best because you didn't want to embarrass the team like that. And we had <laughs> some, didn't embarrass we, the pro team. Yeah, we didn't want to embarrass the pro team like that, uh, being beat by the college all-stars. Uh, but I, we probably had uh, – 
12 or 15 Hall of Famers uh, on the uh, uh, college all-star team that year. And they went on the uh, Hall of Fame in Kansas City and, uh, you know, many other teams. And it, it just was a great group of players that graduated that year. And we came together and really did well you know, together. So yeah. I'm going to out myself because yeah. I, I watched the game. Did you cover it? <laughs> I watched it. I didn't say I covered it. And uh, I was a big uh, – I grew up in Chicago, so I was a big Packer fan. Yeah. And, and was like – are you kidding me? They're going to lose to these guys? <laughs> you know, and I'm sure Lombardi probably died a thousand deaths, but the players probably it's like, well, we got to play this game. Yeah, they were they were you know they were two time world champions, right? Yeah, and they were an exhibition game for them, right? But you had to play it, and it was a college all stars, and we ended up beating the guys, and and. One of one play made me more famous than I'd ever been in my life, and I ever thought I would be. I tackled Jim Taylor for a loss in that game, and the and the announcer said, "Oh, this is the first time in history that Jim Taylor's ever been tackled for a loss." You know, <laughs> Leroy Jordan tackled for a two-yard loss. <laughs> well, and the other Did thing, Taylor say anything to you? Like, what are you he, doing, Ricky? Yeah, he called me a few names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing we should point out, because preseason games today, the starters, you know, especially the first preseason game of the year, the, you know, sometimes the starters don't even play, or they'll just play one series. But the starters for the Packers would have played the entire game. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they played the game. It was a big deal back then. Right. It, it was a start-the-season deal back then. I, you know? I remember going back and looking at the old newspaper archives here with the Cowboys yeah. Yeah. from the early 60s when the Cowboys would play the Packers in the preseason. And it was like the Cowboys, I think, beat them one year in the preseason. And it was like a banner headline in the Dallas Morning News that the Cowboys beat the Packers in front of a sellout crowd at the Cotton Bowl. Like it was a huge deal. It was a, it was one of the six preseason games. That so played. just go back to, was Otto Graham still the head coach at that yeah, time? Yeah, he was, uh, he was head coach. Because Otto Graham used to be the head coach every year of yeah. the College All-Stars. Of the College All-Stars, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> since we're talking about your rookie year, you need to tell these folks uh, your story about your uh, signing bonus and Gil Brandt. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I signed and got a new car as uh, part of my What bonus. kind of car was it? I was trying it to was remember. A Chevrolet. Like a uh, well, fancy one, right? Well, no, it was a, like a Chevelle. I had negotiated for a Chevrolet, but I came out here and they wanted me to visit the Buick dealership, and it was the first year of Riviera That's was it. on the market. Okay. And so I, I said, Buick I'll take, Riviera. I'll take that one right there. He said, no, no, Gil said, uh, you'll have to pay some of the money back. That's too expensive. <laughs> uh, so I think I gave back $3,500 of my bonus so I could get the car that I didn't want to begin with. Uh, but uh, that's the one they wanted me to deal with the dealership. So here. that was so, your bonus. Yeah. What, what, what was your salary? Uh, boy, I knocked them naked. You know how Gil, you know how. I Tex, know Gil. You, you know Tex Ram. Tex, much he, yeah, yeah. 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 He, I, I signed for seven thousand. I was seventeen thousand five hundred my first year, eighteen five my second year, and nineteen five my third. Year. Big raises. So big yeah. raises. We got knocked them naked back then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as the story goes, so you get the car, but Gil's going to bring it to you, right? <laughs> yeah, I had to fly over, but I had exams uh, that next day, and so. Uh, I, Gil said, I'm going to Georgia to recruit a guy, and I'll just bring it to you. And so he uh, was called me Friday night in Meridian, Mississippi, and says, I got a problem. I just hit a cow with your new car <laughs> on the interstate highway. Yeah, and he said, D do you have any insurance on your other car that will cover this one? So he wanted me to. I said, no, no, I, I gave that to my sister already two weeks ago. So, <laughs> and, 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 and that Gil's part of the story was, so, yeah, he hits the cow. He's in the middle of Mississippi, and they're going to charge him for, the, like, the guy that got the cow killed, it was his cow. He was like, yeah. well, you're going to pay for my cow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know Gil, as cheap as he was, he ain't doing that, right? So yeah. he knew somebody that was coaching somewhere at Mississippi State. He always State, knew somebody right? somewhere. Yeah. And they yeah. kind of they made, made, made good. It's like, okay, it's it's a cow. Yeah. <laughs> but it's your car. Yeah, my car. I had a new wreck car for, <laughs> for my bonus. <laughs> so did you work in the off season? 
every off season I, I work in uh, back then it was to make a little money but uh, also to learn about business life and trying to plan for the future when there wasn't football so uh, and I'm so glad I had some guys really took me in and showed me how to run a business and showed me how they made a profit and what you had to do to cover the profit and you know so uh, it, w- it was really a experience for me, and I had some great mentors that uh, worked with me in the off season. And so, then you got into the lumber business. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it, it's perfect for Leroy Jordan, is it? who brought the lumber. Oh, no, okay. the one when he played football to have the Leroy Jordan Lumber Company, which is located still there, right uh, near right Love Field, west of Love Field. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. How many years? Forty. Uh, 41 years, I think. Oh, man. 41 years. That's a lot of lumber. Yeah, that's a lot of <laughs> lot of time, a lot of years. <laughs> a lot of and time. the family's running it? Well, my two sons are yeah. working there, and uh, they're doing most of the work. I, I still like to take the credit, you know. But, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> somebody's got to take the credit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we continue with Leroy Jordan. More stories with the Cowboys legend. And the Cowboys Legend Show continues in a moment. To the SWBC Mortgage Dallas Cowboys Legends Show. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. For more than 40 years, SWBC Mortgage helping people, companies, and financial institutions prepare to win in Texas and across the country. Visit SWBC.com to learn more. Welcome back to the Cowboys Legends Show here at the Cowboys Club 
overlooking the practice field here at Ford Center at the Star. Is that the in Cowboys Christo. out there practicing? There, are, there is a team out there practicing right now. <laughs> There's a tour going on. It's like a team picture, too. That's right. Bill Jones with Mickey Spagnola. Our legends guest Leroy Jordan. Smacker Miles has a wireless microphone. Where is Smackers? There you are. Hi, Smacker. Got hey. anybody? Oh, we got some bashful fans here. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get into Leroy's book a little bit more here. Leroy, my story of faith, family, and football. Where can we find this book? Well, uh, Amazon is the best place to find it right now, and we're going to be having some signings uh, here in Texas. We we had several in Alabama last week to kind of kick off uh, the opening of the book, and uh, uh, we got to – go to the LSU game and do a few signings at the Bryant Museum before that and uh, uh, Birmingham and Tuscaloosa and, you know, we, we covered the ground pretty good down there. So. Did you get writer's cramp from signing books? Oh, yeah. I, got, I, I wanted a, a steroid shot in my, <laughs> my shoulder. I, it was so sore at one time. Well, so. good for you. Yeah. So Amazon, uh, does it get in, do people put books in bookstores anymore? Yeah, we're uh, we're working on uh, you know uh, all of the books the usual right. spots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just uh, in time for the holiday yeah, season. Yeah, we're just in time, and we're trying to get uh, Barnes and Noble uh, lined up. But uh, you know they're big corporate right. deal, and it's kind of hard to get through the, the the management group. And one more about the book. Smacker's got a fan here with a question. Yes, here's Boomer. Boomer, all right. Thank you very much. I was curious as to your relationship with the great Chuck Halley. We talked about Tubbs earlier, but I know you got to play with Chuck Halley for a few years, too. So uh, just talk about him for a minute, if you would. Yes, uh, Chuck is one of my very best friends, and uh, he and I have been friends uh, since 1963. And we became friends immediately because when I got here, I was number 54 in Alabama, and I was drafted here, and he was already had 54. So I said, just give me the next number closest to 54 then. So I got 55, and it worked out okay, you know. So Chuck and I have had a great relationship uh, ever since, and we uh, also have, you know, business relationships that uh, he's been in the business for uh, 50-something years, I guess, in the laundry and dry cleaning and uniform rental business and has done really well. And uh, he's just uh, one of my favorite people, and I just uh, look forward to I was going to try to hit him for dinner, uh, for lunch today, but I didn't get it done, so I'm going to try to get him for lunch and tomorrow. And for long-time residents here in Dallas-Fort Worth, you'd always see the Chuck Halley trucks around yeah, town. Yeah, Chuck Halley's yeah. the uniform rental truck. Yeah, exactly They're right. Yeah. Going, going around town. Yeah. We know it was really neat to see him when you guys were all here for the uh, induction of the Ring of Honor walk outside. Yeah, he was able to come, and uh, he had to have a little wheelchair work to and from because his balance and equilibrium is not good uh, right now. And so we just uh, we love him so much, and just uh, I can't wait to see him again. I haven't seen him in a month, and so i got to get over and see him uh, real soon. How much did you enjoy that ceremony? All you guys together, and that doesn't happen. All the Ring of Honor guys that were living, basically everybody almost was there, right? Yeah, yeah, everybody was there, and uh, we got to see each other and visit. And uh, God, it was a great, great experience. And Jerry and the Jones family uh, just made us feel so welcome. And uh, we just... Uh, feel really great about, uh, you know, the club here. Uh, we're getting to be members of this. And so that was a, another highlight and something we didn't expect, you know. Now, I would do this, but I don't know if he does. Do you ever drive by and go look at your number? <laughs> well, <laughs> Cause all, for the folks that don't know, they put their numbers out here on the sidewalks <laughs> around the restaurants and uh, the retail stores, and they're huge. It's like a monument. Yeah. Basically. Mickey, Mickey would camp out out there if you could. <laughs> they're going to put my typewriter there at some point, you know? Charles Haley said, uh, well, uh, when we did that, he said, I know where I'm going to be buried. Now. <laughs> so I'm going to be buried right under these stones. <laughs> I would be surprised. I mean, it's pretty neat. Yeah. It really is. It is a great, great venue. 
<laughs> and I was telling the other guys, and I'll, I'll tell Leroy, that every night, by the way, somebody goes by there and they, they wipe off the numbers. They shine them. Is that right? Keep them clean. Mm. So your nice. number's clean out there. Well, good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In your book, Leroy, My Story of Faith, Family, and Football, who are some of the some of the people in there? that? You... Well, uh, Gene Stallings, uh, Roger Staubach, Joe Namath, uh, Randy White, uh, we got 24 contributions of uh, short chapters and our relationship with each other as a player or as a coach and player. So uh, I'm so excited about that. I have a high school coach even in there and my a pastor from uh, high school uh, back at my Assembly of God Church in XL, Alabama, is still a friend of mine that's real close, and he is uh, – he has a segment in there. So I'm so excited to get this out there where people can see my relationship with other people uh, along my life's trail as I've uh, run it. All right, so take me back, what, 55 years ago, 1962, you had a sophomore quarterback at Alabama named Joe Namath. And that, well, what was Joe Namath like before he became Broadway mm-hmm. Joe? Well, he was a great athlete, a great runner, uh, equally as well as a passer. Uh, and he was a great uh, baseball player, too. We thought he was going to play baseball instead of football, but uh, Coach Bryant convinced him, you know, that the football would be the way to go. So <laughs> Bryant had a way of yeah, He had a way people, of talking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he was a good salesman. <laughs> so, so was he flamboyant in college? Kind of, but not near like he uh, became uh, when he be- went to New York. <laughs> and got his mink coat. <laughs> yeah, got his mink coat and uh, – Broadway Joe uh, was off and going at that time, but uh, he he was a great guy, a great teammate, and you know I I kid him a little bit. Uh, we played him here in the Cotton Bowl uh, uh, after I guess his second or third year, and he threw me an interception. I I went by and told him he was just taking care of an old Alabama <laughs> teammate, <laughs> taking care of. Her. Me and making me so feel you good. did get yeah. to play against him. Yeah, I did play against him a couple times uh, in the pros. Okay, yeah. all right. You mentioned Randy White, of course. Uh, when oh. Randy was drafted by the Cowboys, number two overall, and then he was going to be replacing Leroy Jordan at middle linebacker, and then yeah. of course he became a Hall of Famer as a defensive tackle. Yeah, he uh, he was going to replace me, and uh, uh, I think about the third game, uh, Coach Landry was using him as a pass rusher part-time and just sending him in at certain times of the game, and he was doing such a great job. He's, we got to have him in there every play. And so all of a sudden, Bob Lilly retires, and Randy White is our next Bob Lilly. So so unbelievable, great, uh, great guy and a great teammate. What was it that stood out about him when, when you first saw Randy? He had uh, – the quickness uh, of Bob Lilly, uh, but he had uh, maybe a little more muscle and strength because Randy had uh, beefed up when he came here. He, he'd pump a few weights in his lifetime. So. <laughs> he still he is. Still by the way. Yeah, he yeah. still does. He still is uh, pumped up. So, But he was uh, very quick, very strong, and just one of those great hustlers. Uh, he was wide open, you know, full speed. Uh, uh, from the whistle to the whistle, yep. you know, he was that way. Yep. All right, final minute here of the show, uh, this current Cowboys team. What is it that gives you hope that this team, this season could be special? Uh, you know, just uh, Dak and uh, our, our guys that we have in the lineup. Uh, I, hope we, I hope we get our uh, offensive line where they're intact for the rest of the season. I hope they get over their injuries and, you know, we we got to get some a uh, little better play our defensive back. But I was so impressed last week uh, with the play of the defense in the second half against the Kansas City team. It's uh, really good, really good. And Bill, it'll help if uh, they get a favorable ruling maybe tomorrow to get that, their running back. Nice. Yeah. You know how important running backs are, right? Yeah, you had a few. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if we'd have had a couple of my last two years, we'd have won Super Bowls those years. But uh, <laughs> right. we just didn't have a running game. He, Dorsett just didn't get there yeah, soon enough yeah, for yeah. you, right? <laughs> yeah, I left the year he came. Uh, so. All right, Leroy Jordan, our legends guest. We appreciate it very much. We'll have to do it again sometime. All right. All right. Thanks, Leroy. 
And next week we've got Darren Woodson. Woodsy, Woody will be in the house. We'll see you next week.